Reet then lads and lasses, how we doing and welcome back to the channel, welcome back to a match preview as well, ladies and gentlemen, I know for the past 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 games I've always said this game is a must win game, we cannot lose this one, it's vital to see how our season is going to pan out, but this one against Tottenham Hotspur, tomorrow, Saturday, half 12 kickoff, it's nothing less than a must win game, I think that's getting added on every single game towards the end of the season as well, we're being too inconsistent, it kind of looks like we're winning one game, we're drawing one, we're losing one, we're going to one game, we'll get battered in the first half, we'll go and win it somehow, the consistency is not there at all, but genuinely, Tottenham Hotspur are chasing for Champions League football, they are going to be hungry for goals, they're on fire, certain uh, players in their team are absolutely fantastic as well, of course we'll take a look at them, and of course, we've got some injury news for Newcastle United and Tottenham Hotspur as well, going into this game, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to say I don't have high hopes, but let's get into the match preview. So just before we take a look at how Tottenham Hotspur can hurt us in this game, how they've been doing this season, how they're set up, what they could look like, what their key uh, sort of main players are, of course we'll do that with Newcastle United as well, uh, a very, very bad team we could feel from this by the way, we'll take a look at the injury news, but just before we do that ladies and gentlemen, if you do enjoy this video and of course the match preview, hit that like button, subscribe if you want you're around here and of course get down in them comments below, what's your score prediction for this game tomorrow, I'll give you mine at the end and I've got to say right now, it's not very positive ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to slow of start the match preview on a bummer but honestly with every single game when we are being so inconsistent I'm just getting filled with more doubt every single game but of course when it comes to match day I believe we're going to win six now that's just how it happens as a football fan isn't it but look injury news Eddie Howe gave us some injury updates of course to the media at half nine this morning this is exactly what he had to say he gave us an injury update on three kind of key players for Newcastle United maybe not the, the last one with all due respect to him but uh, of course he spoke about Joe Willock first Joe Willock's been unbelievable for us uh, there was a stat there that he's only stopped only played one full 90 minutes for Newcastle United this season. Not great whatsoever. Some people spoke about cashing on him for a uh, financial fair play. We'll probably speak about that in another video. But of course, Eddie Howe said about Joe Willick's fitness, Joe Willick is unlikely to be involved against Spurs tomorrow. He has been to see a specialist, of course, on his Achilles injury. And it is good news. It's not sort of a bad injury, but he does need to rest. Uh, maybe Eddie Howe's bluffing there. Fingers crossed. We know what Joe Willick done against Spurs at St. James's Park last season. That world-class assist, honestly. One of the best assists I've ever seen air support in the club. But it doesn't look like Joe Willick, according to Eddie Howe, we know what he's like. All of these, which I'm about to mention, could be main games. They could go and bloody start. We don't know what Eddie Howe's like anymore, honestly. He's so inconsistent in his press conferences. But he says that Joe Willock is unlikely to be involved uh, tomorrow against Spurs. And I want a team over mental who somehow got injured. Honestly, he didn't even do nothing with the ball. Just looked like he kind of kicked the ground. And he was twisting in, in agony. He did look very hot, uh, hurt, by the way. But he said on Tino Livermento, he's the closest current player uh, that's injured right now to return to the squad, but he hasn't actually trained with the squad yet. I think that's kind of a very poor indication to how the rest of the squad's rehabilitating right now. If he's the closest one and he's not even trained with the squad yet, it's not good news for the rest of them, is it? And of course, Lewis Hall, who came off and actually he was injured against Evan. He was sort of like, I don't know if he was hurting his ribs or he got cramp or something like that but of course he came off against Fulham and um, we don't know exactly what the sort of injury was I think it was a quad injury actually and Eddie Howe says he hasn't trained all week yet again some lads who we probably would have barely even used this season are now getting injured and it looks like if Lewis Hall's injured Dan Burns going to have to play left back uh, Matthew Target's not there of course Tino's not there Trippier might not be fit for this game who the hell's going to play left back it can't be Paul Dummett we can't put Kraft left back I think in my opinion I, I know Eddie Howe won't do this because he's such a young lad but in my opinion it's got to be Alex Murphy there he played I know it's pre-season by the way and it is against Rangers but when he played against Rangers in pre-season the little cameo he had and of course in the USA um open to other done pretty decent as well look it's much better than giving such a young lad some game time rather than relying on the likes of Paul Dummett we know what he did against Everton he's just not built for it anymore he's not got that physical strength he's not got the pace give Alex Murphy a young lad a chance to actually shine on the biggest stage possible but look, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> away from the injury news, we'll take a look at how Tottenham Hotspur have been doing this season. And look, full credit to Tottenham Hotspur. I don't know why, but I've always had this sort of aura around Tottenham where I just don't like them whatsoever. They are, they've always been a good team, but they've never won anything. They've never done great in European competitions. Of course, they did get the final one time where they miraculously came back against uh, Ajax. But I've just never liked them because they're such an irritating team. They always seem to kind of beat me 
but they never do anything as a club. It, it was so annoying, but I can really respect them recently. Alan postlecoglu has got them playing some fantastic football. This is just some stats from them this season. Of course, we have played them, uh, don't really want to speak about it, but we have played them this season at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. We got absolutely battered 4-1. Do you know what it is? 4-1, a scoreline for that game probably doesn't even do it any justice. We were absolutely hopeless. Every ball was getting sent into the box. Our fullbacks that game, I think it was Tino and Trippier. That was when Trippier was going through that bad patch of form. We were genuinely hopeless. Hopeless. Every ball was getting pelted through. We just looked like a sort of a punching bag for Spurs. We rolled over. It was basically a training session. How we even pulled one back, I think it was through with Joel Linton, who, by the way, signed a new contract. Four-year deal. Get in there, Joel Linton, son. But uh, oh, unfortunately, back on to Tottenham. Let's praise how great they've been doing. In their last 16 games, they've won 10. They're on a roll, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously, they are. I think they've picked up three losses out of 16 games. That's absolutely fantastic. Fourth in the Premier League. They're doing what we were doing last season. They are chasing Champions League football. They are tied on points with Aston Villa right now. I do believe that Aston Villa's got uh, one more game played there than Tottenham Hotspur right now. So Spurs are really hungry going into this game. They won Champions League football and they are on a very good project rebuild by the way. Many people were saying, oh, they're going to lose it all now that, now, uh, now that they've lost Kane. We've seen it with Declan Rice and West Ham. We've seen it with maybe even Crystal Palace in Zaha as a kind of example there. But you know what I mean? Every time a player kind of leaves the team which he was carrying, so to speak, maybe Newcastle fell in St. Maximin Abdul and that doesn't really work. But you know what I mean? They're on a fantastic rebuild right now and their team genuinely looks very, very good. That's from top to bottom as well. In goal, Vicario, he's been a fantastic shot stopper this season. Right back, Pedro Poro. In my opinion, one of the best right backs this season. Left back, uh, Destiny Adogi, one of the best left backs this season, left centre back, Mickey van der Ven, one of the best left centre backs this season, honestly, their defence has been absolutely fantastic, Mickey van der Ven, uh, pff, by the way, what a centre back he is, kind of is like a Sven Botman, not that I want to put Botman down, but especially this season, of course, due to Botman's injury, van der Ven, he's been miles clear, honestly, he's absolutely rapid for a tall and strong lad, and he's a ball playing centre back as well, he genuinely is very, very good, right centre back there, uh, Romero, who he is a hothead, he's always had that sort of quality around him, now, in the midfield area for Tottenham Hotspur, that is where we we can kind of grasp the game from them. They normally line up with, uh, I think his name's Yves Basuma. I, I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but of course, Basuma, uh, right centre mid, and Mateta Saw, I believe it is, left centre mid. Look, they're not terrible, but they are still decent midfielders. If there was anywhere where they did have a sort of downside to the team, it would be that midfield area. Not that it's absolutely terrible, but still it's not as impactive on the, the whole results uh, than the defence or the attack, of course. In attack, they are genuinely packed as well. Of course, I've got Hyunmin Son there. 15 goals this season and 9 assists as well. Brennan Johnson scored 3 goals in his last few games. And James Madison, of course, uh, recently back from injury. We were meant to sign him. We know how he's been getting on this season, by the way. How on earth is he playing in this game? I think, was it against Nottingham Forest? He literally punched one of their players and it didn't go to VR or anything. Watch him go and score now. I'm telling you now, watch James Madison go and score now. He should have been sent off. He should have signed for Newcastle. It gives every indication that he is going to go and score. But look, the, their depth, of course, we can't say the same with all the injuries that we've got. Their depth is absolutely fantastic. They've got the likes of, if, of course, Johnson doesn't start, he'll be on the bench. If Johnson does start, the likes of Kulusevski will be on the bench. And them both are right-wingers. They're both on form. Maybe not so much Kulusevski, but he has still got that quality there. Them right-wingers there, we've not basically got a first-team left-back at the club. Like I said, Matthew targets out. Tino's fantastic there. He's out. Yeah, could be out, of course. Uh, his fitness has not been made a clear indication in this game. Uh, Dan Burns playing as a centre-back at the minute because we, we, he's getting tortured at left-back. If Alex Murphy goes there, he makes his Premier League debut. Bless the lad. I mean, that would be so much, so kind of big shoes to fill, of course. Lewis Hall is, uh, Eddie Howe says, he's injured for this game as well. Could be bluffing there. Fingers crossed he is as well. But if we have to put uh, Alex Murphy there on his full uh, starting Premier League debut, of course, he made a little cameo against Chelsea, I believe it was, against uh, on-form Brennan Johnson, who's absolutely lightning quick it doesn't look good for him whatsoever doesn't it? it seriously does not look good for him so we've spoke about Newcastle United's injuries I mean we all know of course we're missing we've literally got a better sort of injured 11 and of course including Sandro Tonali with that suspension than an 11 we can feel right now that is absolutely bonkers by the way some teams have, be, have got to like cut us some slack through all this injury crisis that we've had but Tottenham Hotspur's injuries have they had any apart from the likes of Ryan Sessegnon or Fraser Forster local lad from Newcastle I believe he is or maybe Gated or something like that he's definitely from the northeast but 
But uh, Ange Postacoglu has actually confirmed that apart from them basically useless injuries, Richarlison will miss this game. I doubt he'd be bluffing about that. I mean, they've got fantastic forwards up top, like I said, Kulusevski, um, Hyunmin Son, for example, Brennan Johnson. They've even got a fair few more. I don't know why he'd be bluffing about that. I mean, he scored against what the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. God knows how he'd done that. But look, away from Tottenham Hotspur, ladies and gentlemen, I kind of express how much of a vital game this is for Newcastle United to win. And it is just that as well. Let's take a look at how much this means to Newcastle United. If we take it back to last season at St. James's Park, which is the only thing we can kind of give ourselves hope in this game, 5-0 in what was it, 21 minutes, it's got to be one of the most remarkable, iconic, maybe not iconic actually, that's probably a step too far, but it will be one of the most remembered Premier League games of all time, 5-0 in 20 minutes, they absolutely crumbled, God knows I went and scored one in just 80 minutes after that, but no, genuinely... Things are very different now. Like I said, since they've lost Kane, they're on Project Rebuild. They're doing fantastic. We've had so much bad luck. Injuries, uh, Tonali suspension, terrible cup uh, runs, terrible cup luck, sorry, I should say, with the draws and all that sort of stuff. It's not panned out how we exactly expected it, but still, ladies and gentlemen, although we've been so inconsistent this season, like I said at the start of the video, looks like we're going to win one game, lose one game, go into the likes of Fulham, get absolutely battered in the first half. It should have been 3-0 to Fulham in the first half an hour, and then we'll somehow go and win the game 1-0 due to a moment of magic from Bruno G, which we've seen so many times this season, Nottingham Forest away, for example. Or we'll get a moment of magic from Alexander Isak, a fantastic shot, although we're lost, uh, for example, away at Chelsea. That shot he just picks out of nowhere and he scores. That is what a top-class forward gets you. So when we go into this game, we need to work as a team. We can't just rely, although they are unbelievable players and at this moment in time, shouldn't be playing in the team that we are fielding right now. The likes of Isak and Bruno, they, they genuinely carry us through every single game. We can't have that. We need to work as a team. The likes of Sean Longstaff, who always came out very recently and said uh, he's playing uh, all he can for the team. He's given absolutely everything. Although his performances have genuinely been hopeless. I guess he is injured at the time, isn't he? But we've just got to work as a team. Even the likes of Fabian Jao, who's been fantastic, he needs to be in his A game. Dubravka from the back, he needs to command more. He needs to sort of communicate with his defenders more. Every single person, and it's not just the players either, by the way. St. James's Park, although it is a very early kickoff, of course, people don't have many drinks there that early in the morning, but we've got to be rocking. And there's been many times this season where St. James's Park has not been the best atmosphere it's ever been. It's not been what we used to be before the... And I that's very uh, kind of obscure to speak on this, but before the takeover, even if we were getting beat five now, we were jumping up and down, we were partying, we don't have that anymore, when we're going behind in games, when we should be supporting the lads, we don't seem to at all, and we need to against uh, Tottenham Hotspur at St James's Park, it's vital for Europe, they're such a hard team to beat because they've done fantastic this season, Ange Postecoglou's got them playing fantastic football, setting up fantastically, we've got to go into this game, the fans get it, give it everything, the lads give it everything, They we know that they feed off this energy, so if we just give them everything as fans, Maybe they will replicate that on the pitch and they've got to as well. If we win this game, ladies and gentlemen, we have the potential to go six. Of course, that will be overtaken West Ham and Manchester United. Man United will be one point behind us, but of course, they'll have a game in hand if we play 32 games, I believe it is. They'll be on 31. West Ham will then be on the same games of us, but right as it stands right now, they have got one game, or we've got one game in hand on West Ham. But West Ham have got the likes of City to play. They've got the likes of Liverpool, uh, Crystal Palace away. That's a potential banana skin. They've got the likes of Luton to play. They never give up. Of course, we were a banana skin twice to them. Lost and bloody drawn drew four forts in James's Park but for Manchester United although they have got a semi-final uh, FA Cup fixture against Coventry if they lose that heads will go down hopefully but they've got some very very easy fixtures coming up back to back they've got Sheffield United and Burnley at home in the Premier League both at home both in about three days space of time which I know is uh, pretty hard to play two games in quick succession but still the bottom two teams in the Premier League both at home as well honestly you couldn't write that I'm not saying it's bad luck or scripted or anything of course they came out behind uh, before before the season, a ball was even kicked, you know what I mean? But still, it's so, so just panning out the way we didn't want it whatsoever. Nothing has went our way this season in the Premier League. But for a final score prediction, ladies and gentlemen, of course, if you haven't already, let me know down below what your score prediction is for this game. My heart, my black and white heart says... 1-0 in Newcastle United. We're going to nick it through an Isak shot. But if I'm being real with myself, Spurs are fourth for a reason. They've won 10 out of their last 16 for a reason. You know, James Madison's on fantastic form. Brennan Johnson is. Hyunmin Son, 15 goals. Their defence is absolutely superb. Vicari on goal. Mickey van der Ven. Pedro Poro. Romero. Destiny Adorgi. <sighs> 
it's not looking good, ladies and gentlemen. It seriously is not looking good. And I've found so many times this season in these big games where we must win, heads go down, we'll crumble, we'll lack the confidence, we'll lack the ambition, we lack the fight, but we've got to win this one. But seriously, going into this game with Tottenham, I'm not confident whatsoever. I'm going to have to say... Newcastle United 1, Tottenham Hotspur 2. I don't want that to say whatsoever. And I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying I am wrong, ladies and gentlemen. So fingers crossed I am. Of course, you can expect a match day vlog for the game tomorrow. Fingers crossed we can win it because it does look like if we win this game, Europe could be ours. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to wrap it up there. I've been Jordy Josh. Go and enjoy your day, people.